Welcome back to Demos in Space and part two of the uh, HMS Daring build. Uh, we have got, I guess, uh, a reasonably fair amount of work done to this kit so far. Um, I mean, we haven't got any of the um, superstructure parts glued down because we're, we're nowhere near that stage yet. And I've actually kind of customized, well, not customized, but um, kind of building it out of sequence, if you like. Uh, the, I mean, basically what I've done is with um, the bridge and the sensor dome suite thing at the front. Um, technically, if you go by the uh, the instructions, um, that should be on and glued down by and this part of the superstructure and this part of the superstructure and that part of the superstructure should all be glued down straight away. Uh, and then you go to um, putting the hull together, etc. Uh, obviously, I've not done it like that because, you know, th that's, to me, silly. Um, and at the end of the day, it's going to create more hard work for you by doing it that way because you've then got to start masking everything off to actually paint uh, the uh, the upper decks of the kit and then you've got to take the decks off to paint the superstructures blah 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 and it's just not worth doing so i've kind of taken it out of out of the steps that you should use uh, really to be fair and i've cut off basically all of the tabs on the bottom parts of these kits that would fit into uh, the hole uh, just so I can get these mocked together and then glued together uh, and then work on them off of the ship because it's going to be easier for me to do that than it is to do it any other way. Uh, especially when you've then got a whole heap of um, photo etch that you need to attach to every single kit or every single part of the kit that's on there. Um, yeah, it just makes it easier to actually um, kind of build it in subsections first and then uh, deal with it from there really. Um, so yeah, we've basically, um, well, I mean, this part has to cut, I mean, you'll see how stupid this is. That part comes off. Um, I've just had to re-glue this in one, on one joint because there wasn't enough glue on there. That's why it's still got a bit of tape on there now. I won't bother taking that tape off until tomorrow morning. I mean, I've done all the sanding and whatnot on this um, it just needs a bit of filler in there now uh, and then <clears throat> you take this part whoop, you take this part of that off that's not glued on yet and I can't glue that on really until such time that I've got this all together it it kind of all interconnects and then you've got this little walkway as well and it has posts that go under there and fit into uh, the deck and then we've got the bridge at the front um, now this was in what uh, one two three four five six seven uh eight nine ten eleven pieces just for this so i've got this together as far as i'm willing to take it at the moment because i need to do some painting on the inside and then i also need to do painting on the outside and then there's also a lot of seams that need to be filled as well um some of them i won't be able to feel until such time that the uh the bridge is actually in place permanently because we've got some seams um, down this side of the bridge and there that connect to this part of the superstructure that are going to need to be dealt with. Uh, with the um, light that needs to go into uh, the, the the bridge to kind of simulate the um, uh, glow effect that you would get from the instrument panels of a night time. Uh, I'm actually going to glue two uh, very teeny tiny SMDs onto there. I'll most probably put a 10k resistor on each to bring the light right down to uh, a minimum. Um, depending, I might even take it down to um, uh, might take it down to uh, a 25k depending really I can just muck about until I get the light right but I only need like the tiniest faintest of glows to come through into there because we don't obviously being a warship you don't want it lit up like a Christmas tree um, so yeah and then this part 
um, comes off like so. It's a bit tight on there to be fair, which again is another one of the reasons why I don't really want to get it glued on. Um, this upright part here uh, is some type, some type of mast I believe. I've had to remove all of the detail from, from this section. Uh, you've got like discs on there and then you've got little antenna on there as well. So I've had to remove all of those details uh, because it's all going to be replaced by photo etch. The discs on there were like four or five times thicker than what they really should be. And then we've also got, if I can get this one off, there you go. Uh, we've got that superstructure as well. This is done, just needs a little bit of filler being put into it and that's uh, good to go. Um, this is where it gets interesting. We've got the smokestack there. Um, now I've actually glued this part in to the uh, to the roof. Um, that part is just kept in there by uh, gravity. These two parts here um, are actually, believe it or not, a part that's buried on the inside. This is why I can't really glue it all together. So that part comes out, as I say, I've just glued those two parts together. Um, there was no need to actually um, not glue them together, really, to be fair. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, the aft wall there, or the aft section of the uh, hangar bay. Uh, we've got the door in the open position so we can look in. Again, I'll be putting lights in there as well, red red um, LEDs, and then we can take that out. So, again, I don't need too much light in there with a the red LED, so all I'm going to do is just add uh, two red LEDs in there and then uh, resist the hell out of them as well just to bring the light right down. I'm kind of toying with putting white lights in there as you would have during the day um, on a normal sort of uh, uneventful day you would normally have some level of light in there so you can see what you're doing with the um, bay door closed and again if I do do that then they will have the resistors put on there to um, just really bring that light down to a, a light tone really. <laughs> so these are the two walls um, that basically make up the inside of the hangar bay. We've got a photo etch that needs to go into those, so that's cool. Uh, we've we do have one of the uh, the small inflatable rib boats. Uh, we've got one door in place, and then on this side. Uh, I've decided that this is going to be uh, open uh, and the boat, the uh, the small ribbed um, inflatable is going to be in the water. Um, so I'm going to have the, uh, the the arm coming out of the boat um, to simulate that it's just been put into the water. And then we've got obviously the top half of uh, the, the hull put on and also the bottom half and we've also got the um, uh, the uprights in there as well to keep the hull in one piece. Um, this is basically the bottom of the hull but we're not using this because it's going to be a waterline kit so this can just go in the parts box but I mean obviously it stands to reason that that would basically fit kind of like so uh, and then you would use a different bit on the end there um, to put that in. So yeah, it's not going too badly, to be fair. Um, I am making a little bit of, um, that goes on that one there. Uh, I am making a little bit of uh, progress on this wee beastie. One of the other things that I have been playing with as well, if we can just get some of these parts out of the way, is I've been working on the, um, the boat or the little ribbed uh, inflatable because that's going to be in the water and it's going to be speeding off somewhere we where we don't know because it's all hush hush top secret us uh, little civvies aren't allowed to know um, so this is kind of what the boat looks like uh, you get two of these in the kit and that's kind of I mean they're quite tiny be fair but that's uh, what they look like there um, and this is what mine's looking like now 
as you can see, I've taken, well, gutted the entire uh, interior of that, and I need to rebuild that. And then also, I've sanded, sanded, <laughs> dear oh dear Richard, I've sanded um, the the hull of the boat right down, as you can see there. If I get the other one to come, so you can compare it. Um, Oop, that way, there you go. So yeah, you can see how they've been sanded down. So basically, the boat is going to be kind of going through the water, like the, well, not at that a severe angle, but it's going to have a little bit of angle on it as though it's at full power. Uh, the arms or the crane arms for the boat, um, they start out life like so. Um, and that's the only way that you get them. You can't pose them in any other way apart from that way. Um, so I've taken one of the crane arms and chopped it to pieces. And we've kind of got it looking like that now. Um, all I need to do with that is attach this uh, little part here um, that fits into the wall onto the end there but before I do that I need to actually make a, a, a proper bracket for it so it can hold in. I have actually got a small piece of um, styrene that uh, I'm using for that. I've cut it to rough size um, and then I'm just going to shape it around the uh, the triangle shape of this and then I will insert the this triangle into that uh, piece of uh, plastic and then glue it together and then glue it onto the end of there onto the end of the arm and then it have the strength that it needs to go in there it doesn't need to be really really strong to be fair uh, I mean all it's going to have dangling off the end of that is some really really light photo etch and that would be fine so that would be that would be that would be fine um, what I've done with the uh, the bridge as well is um, because part of this, this part from, I'm not sure whether you can see that, yeah you can just about see the line there. So from that line downwards actually forms part of the back wall of the bridge. Um, so I'm putting the two lights on the ceiling of the bridge um, so the light source can't be seen and as I say it's going to have the Resist, it's going to be res resisted quite heavily um, and I've just drilled a couple of little holes on either side there for the wires to go through they basically go down this part of the structure and then out through the bottom um, I believe with this kit rather than having it run through uh, the mains I'm just going to run it off of a 9 volt battery I'm just going to get a 9 volt battery basically and um, have it running through a 9 volt battery. Um, if I can get a rechargeable one then I'll, I'll get a rechargeable one. Um, it's just going to be easier to have a battery on it. Battery clip on the bottom of the base so I could that's hidden and then I can just take it off. I mean if I can get my um, uh, my astute down there we go so yeah there should be um, if you look at that, there should be enough room uh, to get a 9 volt battery uh, and a clip in there. I mean, even if it's stuck in with Velcro, um, it should do do the same, really, to be fair. And plus the fact, with uh, that ship, because the, the hull is a lot shallower than that, it will raise the, uh, the, the bottom of the... Uh, the base up a little bit more so if anything there's going to be a little bit more room in that than uh, than the astute but that doesn't actually need any batteries in it because it's a submarine um, and you don't have windows or lights coming from the outside so yeah that's kind of basically where we are at the moment I'm just going to continue on with this and um, do some more work to the hull uh, and then and also the little boat and these little areas this is going to need a lot of uh, finessing it's pretty crap really I mean I 
I wasn't expecting much from uh, an airfix kit and uh, luckily enough I'm not disappointed because I set my expectations beforehand. Uh, but I mean apart from that it's proven to be a good little kit. I'm enjoying building it. It's not, uh, nothing's a million miles out. Um, it's just unfortunately when you get all of those bits together that are slightly out it does tend to then uh, cascade further and further down the line so everything then does look a million miles out. Um, but yeah, uh, but apart from that, it's a good little kit. I'm enjoying building it. Um, so it's just going to be really, well, for me, first airfix kit that I've ever built in my entire life. And secondly, um, only the second ship that I've built. Uh, well, third if you count the SG. No, that's a submarine. Um, but there we go. So anyway, guys, um, I'm going to leave it there. I'll get some more work done to this wee beastie, and I will come back to you. We've got most of the sub. Well, we've got all of the sub assemblies done to the ship that we can do now. Um, and to be fair, it's not looking too bad. It's not been as finicky as I thought it was going to be for a airfix kit. To be fair, uh, it's actually been, uh, dare I say, a pleasure to work on, uh, <coughs> which is amazing. Seeing as all the uh, the stories I've heard of uh, airfix kits. Um, so yeah, quite happy with it. The next job for me to do really is to go around all of the superstructure and uh, remove all of the ladders that are moulded onto the, the, the plastic because that just doesn't look realistic at all. So I need to get rid of that and then replace them with the photo edge ladders that we've got. You only get like um, a length of ladder that's like that. There's no little legs on them so you can sort of uh, glue them onto the side of the ship so I'm just gonna need to fashion my own little uh, anchor points or whatever you want to call them um, so it brings the the ladder slightly off the uh, the, the wall of the ship uh, the wall of the superstructure uh, just to make it look uh, more realistic <laughs> so I need to do that and then once I've done that bit then I can just get on with the uh, the rest of the photo etching on the kit Quite a few of these parts that are actually on here can come off. I mean, this this dome that's on the top here that stays that will stay on there. Um, I've also, uh, if we just take uh, the bridge and a few other bits and pieces off, here we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, you'll see around this area here the you'll see the white uh, styrene I had to remove that detail and then re-add it the main reason being is that none of it actually lined up at all you, you, it was kind of stepped so you had one there and then you had one there and then it reversed it on the other side and it was just oh my god so I just thought damn it is it's just going to be easier to uh, remove the detail and then re-add it using uh, some styrene and I basically used if this is the stuff here uh, let me see I can't see without putting my reading glasses on I'm getting too old um, so yeah this is uh, 0.8 millimeter uh, half round rod or in inches it's 0 0.030 of an inch hopefully you guys uh, in America knows what that means because I don't apart from the fact that it's small um, so yeah this is kind of basically where the ship is going to be uh, on the model sorry I've taken all of that apart now we're going to have the um, the little uh, rib dinghy or ribbed inflatable coming off at this angle and coming over to this way somewhere uh, as there is uh, going to a ship not sure whether um, I'll put that back on at the moment for uh, demonstration purposes um, so I'm not sure because on here there's uh, I'm, I believe it's a machine gun that goes up there so I'm not sure whether that would be pointed at the ship that we can't see and whether the uh, the gun on the front would be pointed at the ship too or would it just be the machine gun there and then the gun on standby for when it if if, if it needs to be 
So if anybody knows more about that kind of thing than I do, please let me know because I'd like to kind of get that right, to be fair. Um, that would be good. The uh, SMDs that are going in uh, the bridge section, so I need a, a couple of two, two SMDs to go in here just to simulate the uh, the light coming off of the um, the consoles. I basically hacked a daisy chain three 22k resistors together and then also paint the green SMD white uh, to bring the light levels down really really low uh, the only other way for me to get it really as, as low as I wanted it to was to actually use six of the 22k resistors uh, and I thought that was just you know a little bit overboard really to be fair so I opted for three and then paint one of them, paint the SMDs white, which actually brings the hue of the green down as as, as well. Uh, but I would like to get it down even further than that if possible. So if anybody out there uh, knows of a way of how to do that, how to bring uh, the light down even lower than just daisy chaining 622k resistors together, uh, please let me know because I'd be interested to know. I was going to be running off, running this off of a 12 volt battery, um, but if I need to use different batteries to actually reduce the um, brightness of those bulbs, please let me know, because I would like to get that as spot on as I possibly can, because it's only the faint glow from all of the... Um, all of the electronics in the bridge that will light it so it's not going to be like Blackpool illuminations the red lights in the um, in the hangar bay um, I think yeah they could more, more than likely do with being at the same intensity as, as those because you don't want those in your face and plus the fact we've also got the scale to remember on this kit as well um, so we need to get the get the lights down as low as possible to, to fit into the general scale of the ship as well still on the hunt for people for for this thing um, I mean I need crew for the for the uh, uh, ribbed inflatable uh, I need crew for the helicopter uh, that's going to be on the deck as well because that's kind of going to be on a standby where it can just come out and you know uh, and, and help these guys out in the rib uh, inflatable if need be and then obviously a man on the deck flapping his arms about like mad for the helicopter pilot um, and then just generally people kind of dotted about inside the bridge maybe going up ladders or, or, or whatever or, or manning the, the, the machine gun nest uh, or whatever it is uh, and then maybe a couple of people in the um, inside the little inflatable boat uh, bay there as well um, so yeah if anybody's got any ideas where I can get 1350 British sailors from I can find British sailors from World War 2 which are completely useless um, the only other ones that I can find are the uh, US Navy figures <coughs> and of course they got their um, baseball cap uh, type hats on um, so even at this scale, even at uh, 1350 scale, you're going to know that they're not sort of, uh, modern UK uh, sailors because they don't wear those. Uh, they, they don't wear the uh, the caps that the American sailors do. Um, so yeah, if anybody knows where to get hold of those or where I can print them off, that'd be great. I mean, I've looked in quite a few places uh, like Thingiverse. Um, and oh, about six or seven different sites I've actually looked at, and I can't see any at all anywhere. I uh, find plenty of World War II ones, um, and I can find plenty of American World War II and uh, modern um, American Navy figures, but no modern British uh, Navy figures. So it seems to be that the market is uh, sadly lacking in that area, to be fair. Oh, I even found some Chilean ones as well, which was quite weird. So, yeah, um, if anybody knows where I can get any of these from, that would be great. 
anyway guys I'm gonna leave it here on this video uh, because it's uh, getting a bit too long um, I tried to keep them as short as I can but uh, yeah, it never seems to work out um, because there's always sort of tons of details on these kits to go through um, but yeah I'm gonna leave it there and I will catch up with you in uh, part three where we hopefully would have started the photo etch uh, detailing on this uh, wee beastie of mine uh, so until then thanks for watching and as always please do take care